all, we are about to go on a ride together. And I honestly have no idea how one this vlog is going to go because I'm filming this intro before I even start the vlog which normally a little behind the scenes for you I should say it's, it's about 50 50 where sometimes I know exactly what I'm going to read and I film the intro like ahead of time but the majority of the time I film the intro to my vlogs at the end because I don't want to say that I'm reading a book and then have to worry about cutting that out later if I don't end up getting to it so normally I film the intro to my vlogs afterwards this however we are filming before I even start this vlog and I have have no idea how this is going to go and also how this is going to do on my channel however I don't really care <laughs> if I'm being honest I just don't care because this vlog is for me and it's for the few of you who have been wanting me to do this been wanting me to do this ever since I said that I was starting to get into romance so we are doing a romance taste test vlog today I have compiled a little TBR I'm not making any promises that I will get to every single one of these in this vlog it just depends upon when I'm posting this and how much time I have so yes maybe I'll get to all of them maybe I won't if I don't talk about a book it's because I didn't get to it and I will talk about it in my wrap-up you guys know I do wrap-ups you'll hear about all the books I read during the month in that I would like to get to all of these though because they are all a little bit different and ones that have been highly recommended to me and also just ones that I feel like I'm gonna enjoy now, enough talking let's go ahead and get into the TBR for this vlog. The book that I know I'm gonna start with and has been on my TBR, sitting on my TBR shelf for a few months now, is Butcher and Blackbird by Bryn Weaver. This one I feel like is just going to be a bit of me. <laughs> and I don't know what that says about me but I'm just rolling with it. It's a darker romance which is not something that I've read before but it's about serial killers who fall in love and if you know anything about me maybe you don't know this and that's okay I'm going to tell you right now I am a criminal minds stan. Like I have watched and re-watched criminal minds. It's my wo most watched show like hands down. I put it on the background. I watch it all the time. It is my most watched show. I love it. I don't necessarily love like the glorifying of serial killers aspect of it but I just can't get enough of that show. I love it. So I just have a feeling that this is going to be something I enjoy. I also have heard this is really humorous, it's funny, while also being dark. It covers a lot of gross things. The trigger warning to this book is about two pages long, and I know it involves things like cannibalism. So I don't know what that says about me, but I have a feeling I'm going to love this. I don't know why. I also know this is the first in a series, so if I like it, I will continue in the series, but we'll have to see. I'd like to start with this one, and then I have a handful of other books that have been recommended to me personally and also just all over the place. All over the place, I'm sure. You can guess what some of them are. I'm gonna show you right now. Anyway, so the first one is When in Rome by Sarah Adams. I have not read a Sarah Adams yet, but when I started reading Allie Hazelwood, my friend Teresa was like, hey, I really think you're gonna like Sarah Adams. You should definitely check her out. So we're gonna check her out. We're gonna do a little taste test. This is also really short. I'm very excited. It has to do with baking. I'm assuming since they're baking on the front cover and that's really all I need to know. I love a book that includes baking. It's one of my favorite things. So this one I knew out of all of them would probably be right up my alley. A really good place to start. So that's what we're gonna do. So we have this one. We have the most famous book <laughs> at this point. I feel like this is like the epitome of the romance genre. Like if you do not read this, you don't read romance. And It's Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. Look, okay, I know, I know. I'm late to the game. I haven't read anything from her before. I'm just getting into romance. I don't know what you want me to do about it except to rectify the situation right now by reading this book and this vlog. It's long. It's a chunker, but... And this book is also huge, so... <laughs> 
feeling that I will fly through this. And that's also something that like I'm really enjoying about romance right now is that it's just easy to fly through and it's kind of mindless. And I am really in that space right now with my reading. I just like it to be mindless. I don't want to have to think too much. Uh, that sounds bad, but if you know, you know. It's just a busy season of life, okay? It's just a busy season of life and I need something that I can just like turn my brain off. Romance is it. We're gonna do this. Um, I really actually surprisingly don't know a whole ton about this. And then I know Abby Jimenez is known for like going deep in her books and like really hitting in all the fields. I think this one includes maybe a lot of like anxiety representation. I'm not quite sure, but I could be completely wrong on that. Um, I just know that her books are known for having some deeper topics. So yeah, we're gonna get to this one, hopefully. Oh so yeah, I had to include it in here for all of y'all that have been waiting for the day that this actually happens. You're welcome. And then I have two other ones that like, if I have time, I would like to include. The first one is Delilah Green Doesn't Care. I saw this cover in the bookstore and I was like, I'm gonna buy it. It's really pretty. It's purple. Something about this purple is calling to me. Also, these two were stunning and it just felt like, I don't know, it just felt like I needed to read it. So um, I didn't end up buying it that day, but I did check it out from the library and I would like to include this. It's a female, female romance from what I understand and I could use all of the queerness in my life. And then the last one, I know I'm reading this month, I just don't know if it's going to be included in this vlog or not, is Bride by Allie Hazelwood. This one is a little bit outside my comfort zone because I'm not like a huge vampire werewolf kind of gal, never a Twilight kind of gal, so I do feel like this one is a little bit outside my comfort zone, but also slightly inside my comfort zone because I'm a fantasy gal. So I feel like I should really like this, I don't see why I wouldn't. I have really liked Allie Hazelwood's writing before so I know that that won't be an issue. So it's like I'm on the fence of this whether or not I'm going to love it or hate it which is why we read things right? I am going to be buddy reading this with my friend Kendall this month but again I just don't know if it's going to be included in this vlog or not. We're gonna have to see as time goes on but yeah I know that I am getting to this one this month so if I don't include it in here like I said it will be in my wrap up but yeah that is my hefty TBR or romance TBR for the month. It's hefty, it's a quite the stack, but I'm really excited about this and I hope you guys are too. I know that some of you have been like kicking and screaming that I'm getting into romance more, so this one is truly for you. Truly for you. <laughs> like I said, I don't really care how well this video does or not. Um, I'm just happy to be here. I'm happy to be surrounded by all of these pretty covers and to get into just like my favorite feels, you know? That's really what it's all about. So this one is 100% for the romance girlies and yeah, I think we should just get into it. Guys, I just got back from a walk so if I look a little roasty toast, that's why it is quite warm outside which makes me remember that I am so not looking forward to hot, hot, hot weather. Don't get me wrong, I love me some spring vibes, but this just reminded me how unprepared I always am when it comes summertime because it's like 70 degrees outside. Maybe like feels like a little bit more because it's very humid today. I was dying, like I was sweating. <laughs> so um, definitely not prepared for the summer heat. Definitely gonna have to go on my walks at like five o'clock in the morning because I cannot do this. No, 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 no. Anyways, so if I look a little red, that's why. But I wanted to give you an update on Butcher and Blackbird because um, guys, I'm loving this. <laughs> actually so invested in this romance. I don't know what is happening. Um, Rowan, he's so cute. Like, obviously, they're, he, they're serial killers, okay? They're doing terrible things. We know this. They're doing terrible things. They are also serial killers that kill other serial killers. So they really are like, 
in their own twisted minds doing good in the world because they are taking care of problematic people and other serial killers who unalive children or, you know, do terrible things they are taking care of those people. So like in their sick, twisted minds, they are um, part of the solution. But regardless of that, and like the actual hilariousness of like their crimes, like I got to the part where they, where it was cannibalism. And um, let's just say it was hilarious. It was absolutely hilarious. I was dying. Like I was laughing out loud. It was so funny. I literally blew through half of this yesterday. Like, and I didn't want to put it down. I was, I had to force myself to stop and put it down and like eat food. <laughs> I was like, Kylie, you need to eat meals. Um, I could have kept going and read this all in one day. I'm utterly obsessed with it. I was not expecting to love it this much, but like Rowan, he's so cute. Other than like his serial killerness, he is a chef. He owns restaurants and Sloane is very much like no one has ever loved her. So she is very just kind of strong-willed, but also has this like wall up, but like Rowan's breaking that wall a little bit and it's just adorable why am i so invested in this romance right now i don't know what is happening but it's adorable and i need to know what happens immediately i need to know i like i'm so scared for the third act conflict because i'm so invested and i'm like i just need them to get together nothing like overly steamy has happened yet i'm sure it's going to come i mean there's been like talk of things but there's not been any sort of actual steaminess if you get what i'm saying um so i'm sure we're gonna get there but that hasn't happened yet so also i think that's probably why i'm like so enjoying like the first half so much because we haven't gotten like a ton of that and if you guys know like i don't really care it does not bring anything to the story for me like i'm just here for like the cutesiness and the actual romance and like them getting together and like the tension and oh my god and also they have this like competition going on and that is so funny and they only meet like once or twice a year so that also brings like a lot of tension and they text and oh my god the uh, I can't, I can't. Why am I so in love with them? I do not know what is happening to my soul right now. I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving this. Hello. You guys seem to really like when I include, like obviously lifestyle things into these vlogs. So um, we have an order today and like, can we just talk about what it's like to be a woman and ordering clothes because let me just show you I wanted to order a pair of pants that weren't necessarily like jeans obviously <laughs> um but weren't necessarily like slacks either like trouser pants so i wanted something that was kind of like in between so i ordered some like greenish cargo pants but i literally had to order them in three different sizes because what is women's sizing I mean, I'm sure this happens to men too. I'm sure it does. But I feel like specifically with women's sizing, like especially now that we have like regular sizing and then curvy and then obviously we still have like plus size and petite and like all that, like what is what is life? How? How do you know what size is going to fit? And I haven't actually bought pants from American Eagle in so long. I've been on a Madewell slash Abercrombie train. I don't know what size I am at them anymore. And like, this is the result of what had to happen. Luckily they have an amazing return policy. So we're gonna try these on, see how we go. I feel like I'm gonna start middle of the road. <laughs> we'll go from there. Um, we can go up or we can go down. And then I also just got a white button down but I got it also in two different sizes. I have a very similar type shirt to this or if not the exact same shirt in um, another color but I wanted a white one because you just can never go wrong with a classic white button up and I just really like the way it looks like laid back and casual with like gold jewelry. I just really love that look but I wasn't sure if I wanted it to be like a little bit more oversized than my other one but I just have a feeling this is going to be like extremely oversized and I feel like it might be a little bit too much. 
yeah, that's gigantic. That is, <laughs> it looks ridiculous. We'll have to see how it looks on, but that might be entirely too big. Okay, let's try on the pants and then we'll go from there. All right, so here are the pants. They're like cute green cargos. Love that. This is the size up because my normal size fit, but I wanted them to be like baggy and not like glued because I do have um, a little bit of a booty and I didn't want them to be hugging them. I wanted like a relaxed look. And I also kind of love, they have like a little bit of an elastic situation here. They're like button and fly, but like it just makes it so much more comfortable. And then this is my normal size, the white button down. So this is the same size as my other one, but like it's still oversized. It's still gigantic, but like not too gigantic. The other one, I got like the size up. It was huge. So like cute. I mean, I don't know if I would necessarily wear these together. Maybe I would. Maybe I wouldn't. I don't know. But good haul. Now I have so much to return. This is really short, so. <laughs> so much to return because this is what happens when you're a woman trying to shop for clothes. It's so annoying, but like, thank goodness we can do it, right? dog knows the second I'm about to pick up the camera. I feel like every YouTuber at the end of time has said something like that. <laughs> it is so true. They know whether it's a dog, whether it's a kid, it's a cat, whatever, a husband, they just know. They know as soon as you're about to pick up the camera. Anyways, hi, hello. It is currently Thursday. Last night I finished Butcher and Blackbird. And I have some thoughts, y'all. I have some thoughts, and I'm not gonna lie, most of them, most of them are really good because I really enjoyed my time with this, and I'm almost a little embarrassed to admit that. <laughs> but it was just so fun and so unique. Like, most romance books do not contain murder, cannibalism, I mean, all of the most disgusting things you could possibly imagine. Most romance books don't include that, but this does, and it just is, um, so fun. <sighs> this is so hard to talk about because I just feel like it is painting me in a bad light for enjoying this, but if you read thrillers and horror, like, you're used to murder, so, like, why not in your romance, too, you know? I mean, it's, why not? We could have a crossover there. But yeah, I really enjoyed this. Like overall, I found the grotesque things, the things that were like all the things that the trigger warnings were about, like the cannibalism, like the gouging the eyeballs out, <laughs> like all of these things. I found it so funny. Like it wasn't taken, I mean, it's like serious, but it like wasn't taken that seriously, if you know what I mean. Um, so I just found it really funny. Like I wasn't grossed out. I wasn't gagged. Like I just thought it was hilarious and just like added to the story. And I also love that the third act conflict had nothing to do with like communication or like those typical tropes that you see. Nothing to do with that. Third off, the third act conflict, something completely different. I really enjoyed it. I think I'm gonna land on a four star for this. There are a few things that I did find a little bit annoying, like the overuse of their nicknames for each other. A little bit annoying. And like, I can do away with the spice. I'm not taking away stars for that because I knew going into this, this is a dark romance and so we're gonna have some spiciness. I basically just skimmed that part. Like, I do not care. It doesn't add anything for me. I'm just not one of those people who like needs it in my books. So, but I'm not like taking away star ratings for that because I knew that going into it. And like, I think overall, is this the best written book in the world? No. <laughs> 
definitely not. Is it a little bit repetitive in like their nicknames and like the game and that kind of thing? Yes, but did I enjoy my time and like did I get invested in their romance? Yes, absolutely did. I think I am going to continue in this series because Lark, I need to know her story. I need to know it. So happy I read it and then yesterday on my hucker walk, my mental health walk, well we call it because it was definitely a mental health walk, I had a complete and utter meltdown yesterday about tax forms. Don't even get me started. It was just one of those things where like there was a lot of things like piling on and I was just starting to feel a little stressed and then like I was getting really confused about filling out this paperwork and it just sent me. <laughs> I had a dramatic moment myself, literally had an epic meltdown, but it's like sometimes you just need to cry it out, you know? Sometimes you just need to cry and that's what happened. Um, so I needed a mental health walk yesterday and I started Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. I don't have a ton of thoughts yet, okay? I don't have a ton of thoughts. I'm only 60 pages in because it wasn't like a super long walk and I wanted to finish Butcher and Blackbird before getting like really into this. So what I will say is that I find it really funny so far. I think the interactions between, look, I don't even know their characters' names yet. I think the interactions between Alexis and Daniel are really funny, especially like right off the bat, they have this like one night stand hookup thing. And it just like, there's a bunch of animals around and it really was like making me giggle. And then the interactions between Alexis and her best friend, like after the fact are so funny. Like the best friend is, is exactly like how I would be and be like, tell me all the details. Don't you dare leave a thing out. So I'm really enjoying those dynamics of it. But other than that, I don't have thoughts. We did get a Taylor Swift reference, which made me really happy and smile a lot because I do love me some tea swizzle. Let's, let's be real. I'm a Swifty. So I've enjoyed that and the writing is really good. So those are all my thoughts 60 pages in. I will definitely update you when I am way further into it because I feel like I know this is gonna be heavy hitting. We've gotten some like nods of like what happened between Alexis and her ex-husband and it's not great. There's definitely um, a lot of trigger warnings I can tell in this book, but I know I'm like so late to the game. All of y'all probably already read this and are just like waiting to hear all my thoughts and feelings. I totally get you. So I will update you on all of those thoughts and feelings <laughs> as I get further into it but I just wanted to let you know that I did start it and so far 60 pages in I am enjoying it. Hello happy Friday this is a weird angle because <laughs> you are up on my desk. Um, also I have in my hair and like a hair oil mask which is why it looks wet and weird um, so please ignore but like hair health important. Um, I am about to start cleaning. I know, Friday, weird day to clean, but I start my new job on Monday and I feel like I just want to chill this weekend. Um, I have my niece's play tonight, so I'm just going to spend today getting the house in order so that I can just completely and utterly chill this weekend, read, relax, not think about, you know, the upcoming Monday and things like, like, I'm excited, don't get me wrong, I'm very excited, but it's that, like, going from being your own boss to then working for someone again, because this is an employee position, not a contract position, so I'm not necessarily, like, my own entity, I work for them, and that's an experience I haven't had in a really, 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 really long time. It's gonna be very lax, like, I still get to work remotely, make my own schedule, that kind of thing. But it's still that like, you know, come Monday, I have a work schedule again that I have to abide by and that kind of thing. So I'm going to take today, Friday, to clean the house, get things in order. I have a bunch of recycling to do and I want to clean up my office and just make sure that that's all set to go. Basically just clean anything and everything <laughs> that I possibly can so that this weekend I can just read 
and relax and like turn my brain off and just like mentally prepare to like be in that mode again and I also want to set up my bullet journal for next week that way I can get that all set so really this weekend is like not about anything else other than just like rest and relaxing and like mentally preparing and yeah so that's what I'm plan I am going to be listening to part of your world I got up to page I want to say like one, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it was like 180 something yesterday. Like I, it was reading so quickly and I did not want to put it down. I get the hype. I 1000% get the hype. However, I feel like Alexis at this point in time is about to shatter Daniel and I don't think I can handle that emotionally because Daniel is so cute. He is so cute. He is like everything that I, I mean he's youngin. I feel the same as her where like that he would be a decade younger than me like almost and that definitely would feel weird. I don't know how like I would feel weird like feel about that so I totally understand like her kind of hesitation in that but like he's so cute. He's so artsy. He cooks. He has a baby goat. Like what else could you want? He has a dog. I just like and all the things that keep happening that just like cause utter chaos but like they're so fun and like youthful and giggly with each other. It's just so cute but I have a feeling something is about to happen with the ex-husband. Also her family sucks. Um just saying that. Um I have a feeling something is about to happen with her ex-husband that like is going to shatter this poor man and I am not ready for it. And like I almost am like, you better not. You better not. Like I understand where she's coming from and like coming off a verbally abusive relationship. I have been in one before so like I get her feelings but I just love Daniel so much that I'm like, you better not touch this poor man and ruin him. Um, and I'm fearful for the second half of this book. I am absolutely terrified. And it's a romance, not a thriller. So I don't know what that says. I'm like smiling about it. <laughs> I can't stop smiling about this book. I get the hype. I get the hype. Also, Abby Jimenez's writing is just so funny and relatable and also so like you can tell there's an underlying serious tone there but it also is like writing in a way that just continues to grip you and I feel like she's almost leaving like each chapter I don't even want to say each chapter but like yeah I guess so kind of like on not necessarily cliffhanger but it's like one of those books that's just like so hard to put down and I'm just really enjoying it. I, I also really like the audiobook because we have a female narrator and a male narrator, one for each, and I really enjoy that. I think that's really important in a audiobook for a romance, and I'm happy that she does that. I don't know if it's like that for all of her books, but I am liking that aspect of it. And yeah, so I'm just gonna put in my AirPods, start cleaning, and listen to this book, and um, hopefully I don't start crying while I'm cleaning because that would be... Well, honestly, that would be indicative of this week. So <laughs> if it happens, it happens. I will update you with final thoughts when I have them, unless I start bawling my eyes out, in which I will let you in on that. <laughs> Hiya, it's Monday. I am on day one of my new job. I started my new job this morning and I have been on back to back to back to back to back to back to back meetings literally all day long just like learning the ins and outs and like where they're at I'm still doing social media management um just with a new company it's actually a nonprofit, which is cool I haven't worked with a nonprofit before so um it's just learning like all the ins and outs of that and also where they're at with their social strategy and like all the things so it's just been a lot and also like meeting the team getting to know like the inner workings of the company and their goals and like objectives and literally all the things you get it. if you are you know when you start a new job you know the first day is just a lot of learning um this entire week is actually set up for that so it's gonna be a lot my brain is a little mushy it is currently 3 30 and i literally just ate lunch like <laughs> an hour ago um on the last meeting she was like how how are you doing like are you are you overwhelmed or whatever I was like I'm starving because 
I everyone's on different time zones but so for her it was like only like noon and I was like it is like three o'clock for me um I need to eat immediately and I wanted to update you real quick on my reading over the weekend because I haven't updated you since Friday when I was reading a part of your world and some things have happened since then so, and some things have happened. I finished this. I read this in its entirety. We have things to talk about. So this five stars. Five stars. Absolutely. Totally get the hype. I am on Team Daniel all of the way. I love him. He is such a sweetheart. He is such an incredible love interest. I just like there's nothing not to love about this man. I mean he is a little bit younger. Like he is a decade, a decade younger than me. So like it feels weird to like talk about him in that sense but like they can work it out and like age sometimes just a number. So anyways he's great. He loves animals. He loves carpentry. He wants to live in his family's house and like own his little B and B and like oh my god I just love him I just love him he has baby goat what more could you ask for what more could you ask for and the end there did get me a little bit misty it did it did I didn't full on cry but I definitely had a little bit of welling happening um because in the audiobook they did such a good job where like if his voice like cracked from being emotional like it did that in the audiobook they did such an incredible job where like he was actually like it sounded like he was almost crying <laughs> in the audiobook and I just love when audiobooks go there they're not just like reading off the page they're really like putting the voice acting into it and they delivered in this book and it was great and it made me feel all of the things and I just absolutely love it and I totally get the hype five stars I don't know what else you want me to say And then I read When in Rome by Sarah Adams and I really enjoyed this too. Not quite a five star. I think I'm gonna land somewhere on like probably a four, three and a half, four. I feel like what well, I'm still trying to figure out rating romances and that kind of thing. So take my rating with a grain of salt. Really, I just here to say this angle, what is happening? Um, I just like talk that entire time with that weird angle. I'm so sorry. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna say probably like a four ish or whatever. It was cute. It was a good time. I like the small town vibes. I love that everyone is in everyone's business. It feel made it feel very cozy. In this one we are following Amelia but she is known to the world as Ray Rose because she is a pop star and she decides that she needs like a break from everything. She's feeling very overwhelmed. She is about to go on tour and she's like you know what I just need a little bit of break. She's obsessed with Audrey Hepburn and she was like I am gonna go to Rome but she can't quite go to Italy because that's a little bit too far so she decides to go to Rome, Kentucky and while she is there her car breaks down in front of Noah Walker house and because he is such a small town gentleman he wants to help her out and she's like I'm not getting out of my car for someone I don't know it's a serial killer and then obviously he, she ends up getting out of the car and they spend some time together and you know some things happen romance blooms it's cute I loved the small town vibes of it because it just made it feel really cozy and warm I really enjoyed Noah as a character he's definitely grumpy sunshine for sure total grump kind of acts like my husband a little bit <laughs> uh, my husband is the definition of grumpy sunshine um, so I enjoyed that aspect of it. I really loved the relationship that Amelia formed with his three sisters. I thought that was really cute. It was just overall cute. I wouldn't say it was anything like groundbreaking. I don't think there was a ton of like depth there talking about like other topics and that kind of thing. Uh, but it was just fun and a good time and it wasn't like overly spicy by any means. There wasn't really any spice. It was more like them describing their attraction for each other. And then when we actually got to the uh, parts, it was very like kind of fade to black. So I really appreciate that. You should know by now that like, I'm not into like the overly spicy. It just doesn't do anything for me. I don't really like it doesn't add anything to the story for me. So I was fine with that. And yeah, I had a good time. So I don't know, maybe like a three, three and a half, four, 
what are ratings? Do they even really matter? No. I'm having fun is what's happening. Oh, also, he owns a pie shop. So there's a lot of talk about, like, baking and food in here. Um, and it's really funny because Emilio, like, can't bake for shit. So it was just really funny. But, like, I enjoy that. It added to, like, the coziness of it. I'm a sucker for anything that includes baking, okay? I just love it so much. So those are my updates. This is a fantastic reading vlog. I don't know about you, but I'm having a great time. And my next book is going to be Delilah Green Doesn't Care. So I'm gonna start that tonight once I'm officially done with work and dive into that. And I'm actually really excited. I don't know why, but this cover is just like screaming me. And I just feel like I need to read it immediately. So that is going to be next on the docket. Can you spot the dog in the background? You know, I just figured I would come out here and chat with you today. We are here to talk romance books. Um, I have an update for you on Delilah Green Doesn't Care. This copy from the library has some serious water damage on it, so it's a little bit wonky um but i'm <laughs> what am i gonna say i'm really enjoying it so far i wouldn't say i'm like as giddy about it as some of the other ones that i have read in this vlog but i'm still really enjoying it here she comes here she comes to bark at something out the window. Okay, so in this one we are following Delilah and she goes back to her hometown for her stepsister's wedding and her stepsister and her stepmom have never treated her as like part of the family. The stepmom married Delilah's father when she was like eight years old and then he ended up passing away and they never treated her as like part of the family after that. Like bare minimum and she just never felt included. So she's going back for her sister or stepsister wedding is gonna be the photographer and she's like desperate for the money and the stepmom is going to pay rather well so she decides to go there and she ends up hitting it off with one of her stepsister's friends which they actually like knew each other in high school but like ignore each other because you know she wasn't part of the friend group um and so they end up hitting off and it goes from there and it's fun it's quirky i love the wedding aspect of it um delilah is a salty lady she is very salty she's been burned and she like holds back but also at the same time doesn't hold back <laughs> Like, she bites her tongue a lot, but then takes action on certain things, and it's just really funny. Our love interest, Claire, we are also getting her perspective as well, and she has a daughter, and Delilah and the daughter are really, like, getting along and connecting, and that's really cute. Um, the daughter is, like, also a little bit misunderstood and just really just finds that connection with Delilah, so that's really cute. I think we're probably going to end up getting, like, a reconciliation between Delilah Delilah and the stepsister but we haven't gotten there yet but I have a feeling that's kind of like gonna come along. Delilah as a character overall like I like her I'm not like completely obsessed with her and I'm not completely obsessed with like the romance or any of the characters that kind of thing like I'm just having a good time. I don't see this being like one of the top romances that I'm like so 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 giddy about because I am about three quarters of the way through right now and I'm just like oh this is good it's fun time so I'm still trying to find my footing I feel like I keep saying that like still trying to find my footing in romance books and like what I like and what I don't like and the tropes that I like the writing style I like the writing in here it's good it's not anything like super groundbreaking we'd have had some spicy scenes but they've been like tolerable for me so yeah I just am having a good time I think that the thing about romance books at least that I'm finding so far is that they're so easy to fly through like they're so easy to read really quickly and I think that is part of like the appeal especially for me right now where I'm in this season of like I just started my new job I'm three days into it I can already tell it's going to be a lot and it's going to keep me very 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 busy so having books that are easy to read that are kind of I don't want to say like throwaway books but are just like 
popcorn, you know? You can read them, you have a good time, and then you can be on your merry way and on to the next, and it's not... Like, I still want to read those deeper books and those deeper impactful books, but right now, while I'm, like, getting adjusted, I feel like this is the space, and I feel like this is why I'm, like, gravitating towards them, but it also is just, like, I'm having fun, you know? And I'm having a good time, and I'm just, like, it's spring, I want some lighthearted reads, and so, yeah, I'm having a good time with this. I think I'll end up finishing this probably later today. Day. So I will come back with my final thoughts and we'll chat then because like I said this new job is keeping me very busy so I apologize for the lack of like other stuff in this vlog. I have a feeling this is going to be very homey kind of vlog. I apologize but that is just the week this week. I just don't have time at the moment to go out and go on the adventures. I'm definitely gonna have to try to find my footing again with vlogging and my new schedule and learning all of that. But, but it's a process and we're only a few days in. We'll get there. We will get there. Hi, hello! I know, I do so much talking to you guys in this room. I don't know what you want me to say. <laughs> It's just the space I have, okay? My husband and I both work from home, so he takes over like the downstairs and I take over the upstairs, but like this room is just the one with the best lighting and also just like a safe space for me to film and like not feel awkward. So I'm sorry that you see this room a lot. However, in an upcoming vlog, this room is gonna get a makeover. Hint, hint, there's some samples on the wall back there. So um, at least it'll get a facelift and you can get you know not look at these orange walls anymore and also like this room is gonna get a little bit more of an upgrade and I'm very excited about it anyways here to give you final thoughts on Delilah Green doesn't care the ending of this book definitely boosted my rating up a little bit I'm still kind of in a toss-up of like a three and a half and a four but overall I still really enjoyed it I think it was just a little bit too long. There were some things in the middle there that I just found to be a little bit repetitive, but I love the repairing of the sister relationship, or at least the start of repairing the sister relationship. And I love that the third act conflict, like even though it was obvious what it was going to be from the very beginning, because there's it's kind of talked about almost throughout the entire book in like little subtle ways, it didn't end up being this like, like it ended up being a huge dramatic thing in the book. Oh my god, what am I trying to say? It ended up being dramatic, but it wasn't li like that was the main focus. I feel like everyone involved in the book, and especially like what Astrid was going through too, definitely was like the main focal point. And then the third act conflict between Delilah and Claire was just kind of like underneath it all. And I really enjoyed that because I do find that sometimes the third act conflict is just like a little, oh my God. When it's like so obvious, you're like, why? Like I've been building all this time for like what? You know, for what? You already know it's gonna happen. You already know how it's gonna end because it's a romance. And unless it's gonna be like the most heartbreaking romance of all time, you know that every everything's gonna work out in the end. So sometimes I feel like they can be just like a little bit mundane, but I liked that all of the other characters were involved and it wasn't like the main focal point. What was happening with like the wedding and with Astrid and everything, I feel like was like the main focal point and also what was happening between Astrid and Delilah was definitely a main focal point and I really enjoyed that. So I feel like it bumped up my rating to a four. I feel like I was gonna go like halfway through this, I was like, oh, three, three and a half maybe but I like the ending so I'm gonna bump it up to a four I had a good time I feel like I will continue in this series I definitely am so excited for the next one because it follows Astrid and after what happens in this one I'm like I want her story I need a redemption story from her so I'm gonna continue in the series obviously not in this vlog probably next month and like you know continue on but yeah overall really enjoyed it what do you want me to say about this vlog I mean this is a romance taste test I feel like I picked a lot of the most popular ones so like obviously I'm going to enjoy most of them. The only one left that I have on my TBR that I mentioned at the beginning of this video is Bride by Allie Hazelwood. I will be reading it this month but it's not going to be included in this vlog because this vlog is entirely too long already and I need to start editing it and getting it posted. 
So you will have to stay tuned for my wrap up to hear my thoughts on that. I'm sorry about it. If that's the one you were most looking forward to, don't worry, I'm still reading it. I'm still reading it. I'm actually like halfway through it right now, but I can't include it in this vlog. Overall in this vlog, we've had quite the roller coaster and quite the ride. Actually, should I say roller coaster? Not really, because I kind of enjoyed all of them. Let's be real. Favorite is definitely part of your world. I feel like I'm gonna be an Abby Jimenez stan. I went out and actually bought my own physical copy of it because I needed to own it. And I've already bought yours truly. So there's that. <laughs> Um, second, in terms of like enjoyment purposes, shocker of all shockers, um, Butcher and Blackbird. This was just pure entertainment and so up my street with like the serial killer vibes. Like is it a little bit darker? Yes. Does it include gross things? Yes. But like I had such a fun time. I thought it was hilarious. Um, I feel like it's not to be taken too seriously and I want to continue in the series. I just don't even know how that happened. And then I would say that then my next favorite would be Delilah Green doesn't care and then When in Rome. Not that I didn't enjoy When in Rome. I did. It's cute. I definitely will read more from her. I feel like I'm gonna read from more from all of these authors, but I feel like this is just the one that I enjoy the least, but still had like a really cute time reading it. It just wasn't like an all-time favorite. Like where I could see myself buying this one, I think I'll just return this one to the library. But yeah, overall, a really good, good, good reading vlog. You'll have to let me know what you thought of this vlog, if you want me to do more romance vlogs, and yeah, that is it for this vlog. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed coming along this ride with me, give it a thumbs up. If you have any other recommendations on romance books you think that I will enjoy based off of this list, please let me know in the comments. I could use all the recommendations since I'm such a newbie. I can tell you right now I will not be reading Colleen Hoover. <laughs> just can't. And like, I'm not really into just overly spicy. Like I could do without it. I don't need it. It doesn't add anything to the book for me. So if you have recommendations based on that, please let me know. Like I do like the Abbey Jimenez where it's like a little bit deeper and there's just more to the story. I love Ashley Poston. So if that gives you any sort of vibe on like what I like, definitely let me know in the comments. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Do not forget to subscribe if you are not already. Turn on the bell so you never miss a video, and I will see you in my next one where we will be transforming this room, and I could not be more excited about it. Bye! If you and I, the few.